really inspires me. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show in the first place as someone that uh, really does love the process. And uh, so thank you. Thank, for you. That. thank you. Thank you for saying that, but you don't always love it. That's the part, right? Like you love it, but sometimes it's, you got to go to dark places to, to, to get it mm -hmm. done. Well, yeah. Cause it can be a game of just the smallest fractions. And, but usually what's great about it is the team that, works the hardest and wills themselves there more often than not it's always going to win so i think that's with all the skill it takes it takes even more will to play that's why i think it's so cool there's so many themes in, in what you said there the first thing that comes to mind is ian always reminds me that lebron james played basketball for 10 years before he ever got paid to play basketball right he was you know he started playing basketball at six years old just like you you start playing hockey at five and and I think that's relevant for anyone listening, uh, maybe I get your take on this as well, is that it takes a long time to get really skilled at something. Yeah. And so if you have a desire to be a piano player, or like as an example for myself, I wanna be um, a world-class public speaker and storyteller and communicator. You know, giving myself the freedom to take five to 10 years to get really good at it, before yeah. worrying about putting the pressure on myself, like, okay, all right, now that I've been doing this for 10 years, like I really should be good at this, like, like giving myself the space. And so you had all this time before, like here's, a, here's the moment is like, I'm not actually a goal scorer, I could be an enforcer. So to really figure out what's my game, mm -hmm. to really figure out what are the successful actions that I can take that are gonna make a difference here. Yeah, like what kind of public speaker are you gonna be? You can't just, you, you, first of all, you just work on speaking. And then as you go through it, you start to figure out what works for you, what's your strengths, what are your weaknesses at this certain skill. So that was the same for me. I played for 11 years just playing. Obviously, at near the end, I started to do more like camps and working at it more. But then from that age to now, so you're going on 23 years almost in total, but the last 11, 12 years have been really concerted effort. And I'm still, learning every trying to learn every day and i don't think you ever stop learning in anything because if you do then you're getting worse that's an old saying right if you're, if you're not getting better you're getting worse so you can't really stay the same at something i don't think yeah um, jim Rohn said if you're not growing you're dying so same yeah philosophy. exactly so you have to have that mindset and if you're not we're human beings and we're you know we have a reward system built into our biology um and it's it's easy to see why you know you went and killed an animal you got to live for another week you know, that's mm -hmm. our version of that is we do hard things and we try to accomplish the goals. And when we get them, we get rewarded with peace, happiness, kind of fulfillment. But at the same time, you can't get lost in that the, the end goal is what's, you know, going to bring you the peace and happiness. It's the journey that you have the context to get there. If I just woke up one day, I was in the NHL, I'd be like, holy crap, this is cool. But it's like, there's no context to it. So you have to fall in love with that, that journey. And that's where you can't do things and make, you can't do amazing things if you don't love it. Cause you won't make it. It's not, it's no matter how much you love it. It's still so hard, so hard mm -hmm. to get. Here. Yeah. Especially if you want to be, you know, world-class, it's one thing if you're just doing it for enjoyment or if it's casual, but if you're saying I'm going to be a professional and you're kind of planting that flag, it's going to be so hard that you need to love it. Like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's where the, the process comes in. And I, I want to acknowledge you for being an example in my life for someone that really inspires me. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show in the first place as someone that uh, really does love the process. And uh, so thank you thank for you. that. Thank you. thank you for saying that, but you don't always love it. That's the part, right? Like you love it, but sometimes it's, you got to go to dark places to, to, to get it mm -hmm. done. And then what, what do you rely on then? Like what is the, what's the fallback? just I, for me in my sport, it's competitiveness. So mm -hmm. I, I guess, you know, we always talk about with you and Ian to talk, we talk about the ego and removing the ego, but you have to be able to turn that on for hockey. I think because at the end of the day, if we're all just like, Kumbaya, Oh, it's going to be fine. No, no big deal. Then you won't have that. And that's what I kind of see honestly in the NHL sometimes now it's like, I don't know. I see it's some of the games are a little boring. Some of the games are a little, uh, we're just going to go out and try our best and be buddy, buddy with the other guys in the team. And, you know, we'll all collect our sweet paycheck and go golfing in the summer where it's like, sure. I know, like when I get pissed, I'm wanting to beat you. I want to own you out there. You know, like that's, 
what drives me. So when stuff gets bad, I think of all the guys that tell me you can't do it and all that stuff, or the guys mm-hmm. that chirp in games and the, the, the crap that's happened to you and how good it feels to like get a leg up on someone and win a game and beat a team you do hate. So I don't know, like even in some of the skates we do, we have like, you know, taxi skates. Like I want the intensity high cause that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. If it was just like go around and shoot the puck, I get bored of that. You know, I want okay. hard, hard parts of it. So I think that's what fires me up when shit's bad. So again, that com- got competitive spirit going. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, and then just like training. There's days I don't want to do a hard bagger. Or during this week in practice, I had to do a four, little four day quarantine coming up here, and then I was off the ice, and that's out of my process. I didn't get to do my process, so I had to do it in the wait in the in my hotel room, and I hated that. But I knew if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have peace of mind to then know I did as best as I could to get back on the ice and feel the best as I can. And then when I go back in the ice, I had to do the extra skating after practice when nobody's out there. You know, because I know that for me, it works for me. That's what gets me ready. If my legs feel good, my lungs feel good, my head feels good, I play good, I can sleep at night. So I didn't want to do that, but every time I'm like, oh, here we go again. I got to put in the work again, put in the work again, put in the work again. And that's when sometimes when I'm out there, I don't want to do the third or fourth set and my legs are burning and nobody's watching. And I'm just like, well, do you want this or not? And you talk to yourself and you get pissed at yourself. That's why I like David Goggins. When he talks about he turns into Goggins, he gets crazy, he gets evil. <laughs> you got to kind of have that in you, I think. Do you, have a, do you have a name for that? You call him Gabriel or what do you call him? No, I don't get it like that, but I just kind of get like, I just, I, I, you know, from reading his listeners' audiobook six times, I understand mm-hmm. that kind of concept. I probably did it before without knowing what it was, but I just kind of do it now. Yeah, talk, talk to me about that really briefly, because um, again, when I look at your career and when I watch you on social media and when your brother talks to me about you and just how like you, you, you're able to tap into these dark places and you, and you do the meal plan 100% down to the grain of rice and you really, uh, it sounds like the self dialogue that you have is the most important part of your game. Um, yeah. and, then, and then like just to, to nail the, the point right on the head is I listened to David Goggins, David Goggins audio book. Um, what's it called? It's a, you can't hurt me. Can't hurt hurt me. And my friend from, from the office last year was listening to the audio book. He said, yeah, you should listen to it. I was like, okay, great. So I listened to it once and that was fine. But here you are listening to it six times, which makes sense that the mental game to you is the most important game. hundred percent, man. If you, you can have all the skills. I've seen guys that have all the skills. They just have no brain whether that's a competitive brain or just like a care for the, you know, a care or they just, they really like to just shoot a puck. That's it maybe, but they really like to stick handle, but they don't like to get in the corner with a guy way bigger than them and take the puck from them. You know, mm. just, you either have it or you don't. And it's, but I've also heard that a coach say you can work on it, but that's to me the best part of the game. So I get sick and tired sometimes of practice where we do shooting drills and all this stuff. Like, yeah, it's great. There's a time and place for that, but we need to practice being competitive. And that's, that's what fires me up. So if I'm not confident that I put in the work, how am I going to go into those competitive environments and do well and feel confident? Because that internal dialogue is confidence. It can be really negative. And when it's going well, it can be really positive. So yeah, if that's not dialed in and you don't have like, I didn't early in my career, I didn't have things in place to react to things properly. And it hurt me. So I've made that mistake five times now. I've documented it. I've read it. I've got into it and now I know I have like warning signs that come up I always know when I'm getting a little bit off my path 